can you tell me a little bit first yeah. about your solo exhibition and about the title of it, Hello Again? So from the outside, it seems like things haven't really changed that much from this whole past year of pandemic. I know we have vaccines and what have you being introduced now, but what was it that the title was referring to? And I, I, I've just brought COVID in randomly. I mean, I don't know if that's even played yeah. a part in inspiring or, yeah. or affecting the work. Yeah. The, the whole pandemic is obviously is something that can't be avoided because uh, it's been so much in the forefront of the news and it's affected our travel and just being more flexible in general. But yeah, the, it, it's it's been a catalyst for a lot of change for many people, hasn't it? Um, I think it's also allowed a lot of us to really see what we want and what's of value and um, sometimes quite forcefully by universe being pushed out of our jobs um, and even relationships as well. Um, and then, you know, so I think on a macrocosmic level, um, there's that, but then, you know, there's also been hinting at some microcosmic activity as well. So more personal situations. And with me, um, the hello again is, it's essentially coming back to self, coming back to source, to, to coming back to myself. Uh, my birthday's in February, so it's just a nice kind of, you know, um, closure and a new chapter starting. And I'm not sure if you know, but I'm a very psychic. I'm a uh, an empath and I, uh, I use divination tools to help and heal people as well. So um, that's that's very strong in my life purpose. And during the first lockdown, I was actually in Mexico. And so I stayed there for basically like two and a half months, pretty much. And during that period, I thought, well, how can I be of service to people? You know, I can't have an exhibition right now, but I can definitely help and heal others through art therapy online, uh, using what we have in the kitchen, materials, you know, things like that, scissors, um, and just having therapeutic classes uh, through arts and meditation, and then also through uh, tarot, cartomancy readings, so tarot and oracle readings, uh, and giving really like light work guidance for many people that were probably feeling uh, really shocked, you know, because I think if you haven't walked the path yet, in the sense the path being capital T and capital P, if you haven't walked the path of a life basically balanced between the physical and the, the non-physical world, um, it can be very difficult for people to just get through, um, you know, a trip up essentially. And so this has been a huge trip up for many people that haven't been so prepared. And it's not better or worse, it's just a lot of us that are light workers, a lot of us that are working with um, metaphysical, well, basically sh shamanic practices, uh, we're called by spirit um, to really be of service and to, to step forward. So that was what I did. But yeah, so during that time I wrote a lot. So I carried a journal, I wrote in my journal every day um, and a, a lot of the titles, essentially the work for the solo show came about during that first lockdown in Mexico. And I was still working, I was just drawing a lot and then sticking it on paper on the wall, which I'm sure many of you, if you have Instagram, you can look back on my Instagram feed and you'll see me doing like, you know, weird notes. And it's like, I call it magical mind mapping, you know, um, and a bit, a bit of madness there as well, just, bringing out sort of philosophical quotes and I was reading a lot of philosophy and and so essentially yeah as I said before the 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 titles of the works for this show have come out of that lockdown in particular in Mexico and then of course just being more confident of and being comfortable and coming out of the spiritual closet let's say as well and it's not something that I've you know, I, I hadn't really, not many people knew that I had these gifts, these metaphysical gifts. Some did, my close, my close friends and family did, but, uh, but actually coming out publicly, publicly was quite a scary thing as well in my ego uh, way. But, um, but actually, um, 
it's it's just a, a, a beautiful marriage with the work that I do you know as a painter as well so so this is the first time that you've really brought together your your kind of shamanic practice and your absolutely. art practice. absolutely yeah absolutely do you yeah. think you're going to continue working in that way yeah absolutely I mean I've 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 been called by spirit to to do to facilitate in that way and um I'm going to be facilitating and doing retreats I've been getting visions about it for about two years uh, and it won't be just be me um facilitating it's going to be other shamanic sisters and brothers who also have very specific skills like reiki masters for example astrology readers you know that they're able to really help and guide um people as well so it's going to happen i just don't know when yet you picked 36 works that's it because that was the age that you yeah had at the time exactly why was that so key yeah so i'm 36 now and as i said my birthday's in february um and i'll be 37 so i'm very into numerology it's, it's another code language but there's angel numbers uh, there's like 33 44 11 22 those kind of things that really mean something and they have a certain vibration it's kind of like a musical note um but 36 is um 36 works every single painting is a visual journey um and is a documentation of how I was feeling, not just from last year in 2020, which again is another ending um, of a cycle, but it's actually a completion of 10 years prior for me. So 10, a 10 year cycle. Um, and so coming back to 36, three plus six is nine. And numerology, numerologically speaking, nine is a number of very difficult endings pretty much just about to complete itself, but very difficult lessons. Basically, it's a, it's let's say a karmic number in a way, there's a lot of lessons in it. And um, so essentially, yeah, the last nine years, uh, 10 years have been a huge eye opening for me. Uh, as I said, like I got further into my spirituality and practices, going to shamanic healers myself, going to retreats myself, take you know um being a subject for reiki as well from from masters reiki masters uh dream interpretation other psychics and everything and going through very difficult relationships assaults as well having lived in the states for four years in la uh huge transitions in my in my career as an artist uh the ideas and understanding of what it is to be human but also understanding what it is to be a female, a woman. And then obviously within that, these perceptions and ideas of what it is to be a woman in the arts. Um, and then it's just essentially all of that pretty much is kind of encompassed in every single work or, you know, it's hinted at with the titles. Um, and, uh, and then this year is kind of a beginning and initiation and a, a, a commencement, let's say, to to a very new start, a very new feeling. And the gallerist Serena and I just thought it'd be really great to have it in February, you know, as a month. Um, it gives hope for people because January is always a funny month. We can't depend and rely on greater institutions, let's say, a, a greater body to create happiness for us or the life that we want. We have to do that ourselves and we've got to walk the path ourselves. As long as you just keep moving forward. And um, and so that's, that's really why uh, it's essentially called Hello Again, yeah. And can you say a little bit about the works themselves? I know your work has previously has been described as abstract expressionist, but with a flavor of mysticism and spiritualism. Um, and, so I know also you've included things like bed sheets onto the canvases yeah. and what, where does that come from? Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, well, you know, the, the most, the majority of my time, um, let's say during the first lockdown in particular, you know, it was at home or the home that I created, like what, what it meant to be in bed, you know, what it meant to be at home. So I have a painting called To Be Home so it's also again it's a very um you know like a hint on what what it feels like to be home you know 
how can I actually embody the cliche phrase, home is where the heart is, but not just, you know, within myself and my soul and how I can also attract a higher love, you know, like an actual a partnership where we actually meet eye to eye, head to head, heart to heart, body to body. And in order to do that, I really had to do a lot further, more internal work. And uh, a lot of my shadow aspect was coming through a lot because, you know, when we have time uh, or we're forced to by universe to just be at home and have to like deal with your own self for a while, um, a lot of things come up. A lot of shadow comes up. A lot of trauma can come up too. And we get triggered too. And um, so the bed sheets is kind of, you know, it's, it's the, it's the, the symbol um I mean like in semiotics let's say but yeah so it's a symbol of of intimacy physical intimacy it's a symbol of rest um and re repose it's a symbol of connecting to the astral realm as well and lucid dreaming uh and the spiritual and the unconscious um but also um I just thought it'd be quite fun again to break myself open to new ways of experimenting and painting as well and using different materials and again it comes back to the art therapy classes too it's like okay i've got you as a student like i know you don't have time or you're able to go to an art shop right now because they're closed but what have you got in the kitchen that we can use and actually make some work out of it some painting and so it's, it's using that kind of creating alchemy out of things that you have around you. Um, and um, so that's that's basically it. And essentially, I've, I've created a lot of paintings with these bed sheets. Um, I've actually got one set of bed sheets at home left. <laughs> I've got to get myself some new ones. <laughs> um, but yeah, also the material of the cotton, you know, it's not like, cotton duck which I usually use uh, in my painting which is like the traditional default right for many painters is using cotton duck and it's primed I haven't used primed prime canvases in a while which means when you paint over the canvas and you create a layer which is essentially non-absorbent for whatever material whatever medium that you use um, I've ditched the the primed element of the canvas because it goes back to the, you know, the original abstract, well, the New York, the New York school artist, which was all about, um, it was a lot of play, a lot of play involved, a lot of ditching the rule book, that's for sure. I mean, look at Pollock and, and Rothko and, and Hans Hoffman as well, and Helen Frankenthaler and Lee Krasner, there was like a lot of play and, but also a lot of mysticism too, which interestingly enough, the art critics had, the artists knew what they were doing in terms of evoking the spirit, uh, the trans, trans, transcendental aspect of the work and the kind of very, you know, Eastern philosophies and things like that. But, um, but they, weren't a, they weren't allowed to say that it was spiritual, uh, which again now is the hello again, again, is it's like, especially after the AF Clint show in New York and Gu the Guggenheim, it's like, okay, people are having more of an awareness of what it means to live or experience a non-physical experience, you know? Um, and then of course, the essentially going back to the medium, the non the non-absorbency aspect, well, the basically the sheets create more of an absorbance, absorbency. Um, they're a lot more seductive, just visually looking at them. Uh, the experience of 2020 has really pushed me into doing things again outside of my quote unquote comfort zone but it's more thinking outside of the you know the four corners you know the square box um the square frame and uh using different materials uh other than cotton and it's something quite primal primitive carnal human uh about using and using the materials that you have and just just making something out of it making something beautiful out of it and the word beautiful is so heavily criticized in philosophy and yeah okay i get it but um but sometimes things can just be beautiful because they one feels that beauty and um 
yeah that's really it <laughs> you're also thinking outside you said like the four sides and what have you also outside of the white cube gallery because you're going to hang these sheets kind of canopy like in in the gallery right yeah i mean um i don't know how i've got to measure up actually i've got to go to the gallery and actually do some measurements um in the space but well, there's a small space at the back where i'm going to play i'm going to play with uh the light because it's a really beautiful skylight so i'm going to play with the, the light and have these sort of veils um, and just hang hang these sheets and canvases that were, were already soak, soaking in my studio. Um, I have a method of painting on top of a sheet over another one, or if I'm painting over a canvas uh, frame over a stretcher, um, I have it over the sheets and whatever comes through comes through into the sheets. So it's kind of, again, it's that cycle aspect that I speak about quite often. It's, it's also that recycling, upcycling. I really make sure the best way that I can, um, the, the, the materials as in the acrylic and the oil paint and the botanical dyes that I use and the terps that I use, turpentine that I use, don't go into the water stream, which is chucking it down the sink. <laughs> so I make sure that it kind of stays in the work in the studio and, um, and then they dry somehow and I move them around and peel them off. Yesterday, I, the photographer came to my studio and I peeled off these really long sheets and like really, literally like peeling them off <laughs> and, and you can see little splodges of color on the floor on the ground and I was like oh I thought you soaked up all of this but you haven't though there's still bits and bops you know splodges and it, that's quite nice I quite like looking at that yeah like imprints yeah definitely you need to display the floor somewhere as well yeah exactly I quite like it I quite like it yeah how much do you feel your background, you trained as a dancer originally, right? How much do you feel that comes into your work? Because it seems like it's quite a physical. Um, yeah, do you very feel physical. That, that it's kind of a dance in its own right. I use I use my, her, my whole body when I paint. Um, but interestingly enough, um, I actually fractured my toe in December. So I was on this, I was on this deadline, right? To complete these 36 works. I was like, how am I going to do this? So, I, I ended up getting a cab to the studio every day. Uh, well, not every day, but as, as much like four days a week or three days a week and um, essentially hobbled and painted on the floor. So these sheets that I speak about, I sat on them and um, somehow managed to stretch the frame, stretch the canvases over the frame myself because I build my frames myself as well and then just painting on the floor a lot. So becoming even more intimate with the work, more one with the work. Um, and actually fun enough, how I sit is always quite an interesting thing. Cause I, I always, I, and my default is I sit with my leg, usually it's my left leg, my left leg kind of folded inwards towards me and my right leg stretched out on the right. So I'm kind of opening my hips <laughs> in that way and I'm doing, I'm stretching. If, if, even if I'm sat down, I'm moving, I'm moving my arms a lot. I'm moving my, uh, the, my top, my torso a lot. Um, but if I'm standing up, I'm doing pretty much the same. There's a lot of movement from the floor to the wall, uh, turning it around, turning the frame around, turning it back to front, unstretching it or unstretching certain elements of it getting some rope, knotting it. There's a lot of movement. Um, and I really would like to, moving forwards, I'd like to continue doing some more performative life, live um, painting essentially. Cause I sort of started that when I finished my MA at Chelsea Art College. And one of my exams was, was something kind of uh, different, let's say. And I ended up rather than doing a presentation where I was speaking and doing a lecture, I ended up just bringing out a, a bed sheet that I had and it had all these splodges on it. <laughs> and just doing a performance, let's say, in the sense of being me. So I'm not 
a role i'm just me right which is even more scary because when you're trained as a dancer and you've trained in theater for many years the stage is your home essentially but you are in a role and you're in costume so you kind of hide yourself you, you're, you're pretending to you're imagining something else but so i was on stage let's say for the first time in front of my peers and and uh my professors uh and i was performing but i was just being me uh and so yeah, i was kind of like drawing around my body the shape of my body and like rolling and then stretching and then getting up and so i'd like to do more of that i i definitely would like to continue that um but yeah regardless in, in the painting itself there's lots of gestures and like evidence of movement from created from the body the hands um sometimes releasing the brush and actually using my hands sometimes you can see prints but you can also see footprints too in my paintings too um which again is coming back to the cave let's say coming back to that primitive yeah like i was here <laughs> tag <laughs> <laughs>